real big show lined up for you this week, and here to get things a little more underway is a friend of mine, a little bitty man with a great big hit record. Meet Mr. Jimmy Dickens, ladies and gentlemen. Little Jimmy Dickens, country music's four foot, 11 inch dynamo, was born James Cecil Dickens, December 19th, 1920, in Bolt, West Virginia. My folks are all coal miners. They worked for Raleigh, Wyoming Mining Company, and nothing easy about coal mining for a living. There was more love in our family than the money, but uh, we all got by, and there was always plenty to eat. Jimmy developed an early love of music and taught himself to play guitar as a child. So I was raised up with music in my family. None of them played professionally, but just uh, for their own amusement. By 18, he was being paid to sing on a local radio station under the name Jimmy the Kid. Before long, he abandoned his studies at West Virginia University and began traveling the country performing on local radio stations. I had a little old $12 guitar and I carried it in a pillowcase. I had a little postcard picture that I sold for a dime, and sometimes I'd make a dollar and a half or two dollars, you know, a night, and that was good for me. In 1947, he was discovered by Roy Acuff, who introduced him to Art Satherly at Columbia Records and to management from the Grand Ole Opry. Mr. Acuff came to Music Hall in Cincinnati when I was at WLW. He said, would you like to sing a song on the show today? And I said, well, I'd be thrilled to death to do that. Mr. Acuff was the reason I went to the Opry. Dickens signed with Columbia in September and joined the Opry in August of that year. Around this time, he began using the nickname Little Jimmy Dickens due to his small stature. Dickens soon moved to Nashville, Tennessee, where he formed a band named The Country Boys, whose music was a precursor to rockabilly, with such songs as Hillbilly Fever and Sultry Boogie. In 1949, Dickens had his first country hit with Take an Old Cold Tater and Wait. I would have to be right still until the whole crowd ain't. My mama always said to me, Jim, take a tater and wait. The hit inspired Dickens' friend, country music legend Hank Williams, to christen him with a second nickname, Tater. Dickens would go on to place 13 hits in the Billboard Top 40 country charts between 1949 and 1967. He specialized in novelty songs, including 1950's A Sleepin' at the Foot of the Bed. Did you ever sleep at the foot of the bed when the weather was a whizzin' cold? When the wind was pushing around the house and the moon was yellow as gold? And you keep your good warm mattress up to Aunt Lizzie and Uncle Fred? Sleeping at the Foot of the Bed was an old poem that Mr. Acuff used to recite in his concerts when he did his concerts. But a friend of mine put a melody to it. Another Dickens song proclaimed, I'm little, but I'm loud, which was actually a fact since he could project his voice to the back of any auditorium. Although he was small in stature, Dickens was somewhat of a country fashion pioneer. In 1949, he was the first person at the Opry to wear a suit designed by legend Nudie Cohn. In 1950, Hank Williams determined that Dickens needed another hit, so he wrote Hey Good Lookin' in only 20 minutes while on a plane with Dickens, Minnie Pearl, and Pearl's husband. Say hey, good lookin', what you got cookin'? How's about cookin'? A week later, Williams recorded the song himself, jokingly telling Dickens, That song's too good for you. In 1951, Williams took the song to the number one spot on the Billboard country charts. Dickens, too, would reach the top of the country charts with May the Bird of Paradise Fly Up Your Nose, released in 1965. Worried that he was becoming notable exclusively for his novelty songs, Dickens had recorded the ballad We Could in 1957. If any one could ever say that their true love was here to stay we could we could you and but it was the 1963 ballad another bridge to burn that would become a honky-tonk standard when i found you i thought my luck had turned our love's just Another bridge to burn. DJs knew me as the as the little funny guy, you know, and they couldn't picture me doing the ballad songs. But I always put one on every on every novelty song that I did. In 1957, Dickens left the Opry to join the Philip Morris Country Music Show, a troupe sponsored by the tobacco company that toured the states. 
By 1964, Dickens had become the first country artist to circle the globe while on tour. As the 1970s rolled in, Dickens turned more towards live performances and recordings. He also reached personal heights. In 1971, he married his third wife, Mona. His first marriage had ended in divorce, and his second wife died in a car accident. In 1975, Dickens returned home to the Grand Ole Opry, where he would become its biggest champion and ambassador. His popularity there was due in part to his self-deprecating personality and his love for his fans, all of whom he considered and treated as friends. My dear friend, little Jimmy Dickens. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I, tonight, owe a lot of people an awful lot of thanks. I want to thank... In 1983, Dickens was inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame, although it had been years since his songs received regular airplay. Grateful family. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate it. When he turned 90, Dickens became the oldest living member of the Grand Ole Opry and continued to make regular appearances there. Filled with many letters and memories and photos of all the lives you have touched here at the Grand Ole Opry. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Fisher, and, and with my little short friend over here, huh? Yes, sir. You're so tall, if you fell down, you'd be halfway home before you got up, you know? I can't tell you, folks, I don't have the words to thank all of you for what this wonderful occasion. I, I just happen to think of a, one little thing, that's the way I feel. If you see a turtle, sitting on a fence post. Remember, he had to have help to get there, and without your help, I'd still have my paper route. Thank you all for your kindness, I love you. On Christmas Day, 2014, days after his last appearance on the Opry stage to mark his birthday, little Jimmy Dickens suffered a stroke. He passed away on January 2nd, 2015 at 94. Honesty, honest with my fans, honest with the people I worked for, and determined to be better all the time. I've never been satisfied with any one particular uh, performance that I've done, because I always felt that I could have done it a little bit better, and that's the way I want to be remembered. We'll take it from here, little buddy. Everyone come back out, and uh, this tradition that he began will continue with all of us and we owe it to his memory to keep this place alive and going. His star-studded funeral was held at the Grand Ole Opry and he was interred at Woodlawn Memorial Park Cemetery in Nashville. Little Jimmy Dickens never wasted a moment of his long life. He became country music's biggest champion, pioneering new sounds and fashions and always making friends wherever he went. In his later years, he encouraged and mentored the younger generation of country stars, including country superstar Brad Paisley, who said of Dickens, Jimmy made more out of his time on earth than anyone I've ever known. An incredible life in every measurable way. Longevity, yes, practically unheard of. Faith, totally and wholeheartedly. Humor, there was no one funnier or with a better sense of it. A true entertainer, the best I've ever seen. Charm, unmatched. Love, this was a big one. I think he loved everyone he ever met, and if not, he never let it be known. More importantly, I think everyone who ever met him loved him instantly and forever. Friendship, well, I can honestly say he was the best friend any human being could ask for, bar none. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell to be notified of new videos. And please make sure to like this video.